What happens when you combine the new religions of RimWorld ideologies with the nobles of the royalty DLC? Bugs! Lots and lots of bugs! Ones that I'm going to be using today to cheese my way to the Royal Stellark and off the planet in under an in-game year. I'm the Grim Cleaper, and before we get into the video, consider checking out my Discord, where I'm currently being swarmed by Among Us memes and people saying the words, Dr. Sex. Please help me, these people are crazy. Anyways, on to the video. The first thing we need to do is start in a mountainous biome near an Empire settlement. The second thing we need is someone with a really high social skill because we need to be able to persuade a very specific individual. So our ideology isn't really anything special, we like to be underground, but what's absolutely crucial is that we have diversity of thought exalted and slavery acceptable, and the fact that all of these dance parties give us relations with a nearby faction. So naturally, because we're a bunch of tunnelers, we do want to live underground. But what's actually necessary for this strategy to work is that we have gold ore right here. Because for something we're going to be doing later, we need exactly 100 gold. I'm uh, also going to seal this off because I think we all know what's going to happen if I don't. Oh god, you got to be kidding me. Well, there goes our animal. It's a uh, skip hound, which means it actually just teleports all over the place and uh, eh, teleported into a not so fortunate spot. Wait, what? What just happened? I was going over to try to like mission impossible her and she just got up and teleported away. A visitor? His religion is the extra dimensional party. W do you worship Cthulhu or something? I take that back. He does. We're actually going to put that high social skill to the test and commandeer his goods. Is it a good thing that we've made enemies with a faction of uh, Cthulhu worshippers? Eh. Probably not, but this guy's actually really good, so I'm, I'm willing to take that risk. Begin Awoken Fair. Yeah, I don't think my people are very woke. Oh, come on, Aurora. It's this again. I zoned you out of this area as well. Why are you even here? Oh, no. Look at what you've done. Okay, so we got our first raid. He's a pyromaniac stoner, but he's tough. This last person isn't uh, actually capable of violence. They're, they're just here for moral support. Now we're gonna start doing a bunch of rituals to try to pump up our relations with the Empire here. Some of you might remember this from a different video, but we're gonna be going a very, very separate way. And this is exactly why the Ambushed Count. Now we'll accept the quest for Sayeri, but in reality, it doesn't really matter because we're never gonna be completing the quest anyways. Jesus, man, and Tronos looks like he's gonna trip on a pebble and die. Now, luckily, he can actually just make himself invisible and walk right away from this guy. Oh, that's pretty good, I guess. So, Entronos' shuttle's arrived, and, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Entronos, I think, uh, you know, you should wait for it in here. Now, by capturing him right now, the Empire will become hostile. Although, uh, somehow the shuttle for him is still waiting here. Now, if we take a look at Andronos right here, you'll notice he has 106 resistance, which means that recruiting him in the early game is basically impossible. But he only has 5.9 will, which for those of you who don't know what will is, it was introduced in ideologies and relates to enslaving people. The thing is, the introduction of this mechanic has actually caused some very interesting bugs when it comes to royalty. Bugs that we can use to our advantage. The next thing we need to do is work on getting our relations with the Empire back to neutral, which is exactly why we brought all of these nifty rituals. By the way, if anybody ever says that ideology isn't broken, just look at these mood buffs. 37 mood for 5.2 days. How is this even ethical? Well, I, I guess that's why. So we've managed to recruit Mosquito, which is fantastic because of his high crafting skill. Because we need to manufacture a ton of blocks in order to make fine floors, which are for royals. Mosquito tried to romance Sayori by joking about lawyers. <laughs> that actually works? Man, I gotta update my pickup lines. We managed to enslave Andronos, and of course you'll notice that it happened far faster than actually recruiting him. But the reason that enslaving Andronos is so broken is because normally royalty suffer from a bunch of mood debuffs. They require a throne room, they require a specific bedroom, and they have high expectations. But for some reason, when you enslave them, all those requirements just disappear. Meaning that we basically have all the benefits of having royalty without any of the downsides. 
one of the other interesting things about enslaved people in Room World is that you could still use their psychic abilities. And Andronos happens to have a very powerful psychic ability called Neuroquake, which essentially turns almost everyone on the map insane. And lucky us, we got a combat supplier. Three, two, one, and watch the magic. As you can see, everything is now fighting each other. All of these people are going to go kill each other, so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, Neuroquick is a, it's a, you know, an all right ability, as they say. So if we just let them uh, all fight each other to death, and easy, right? And look at all that free loot. Even all the insects have gone insane, so we could just walk in here and take out their hive. So we just kind of masterwork. And it's of Mosquito deeply kissing white between the sheets. Wait, this was built by muffins. Maybe having them share a room wasn't such a good idea. Another little trick is that normally counts will refuse to eat anything that's below their social status. But when they're starving, they'll eat anything. So I don't actually have to make him any fine meals or anything like that. And we can force him to eat nutrient paste. Travelers desire charity. They want 135 silver. Do I look like I'm made of money? The German shepherds in Hakuja? Eh, sure. So we got someone who's incapable of dumb labor. Strike one. But they're really good at plants and medical, so we won't harvest their kidneys. Wait a minute. Her child is killer and her adulthood is healer. I'm sorry, what? That's a special kind of psychopath. So we just got a raid by the Empire, and uh, you know, it's actually funny because we're only five relations away from becoming friends with them once again. So I think we're just gonna do that. So one more party and we are good to go. The Empire is now neutral. And here's where we're gonna be using a handy dandy little bug. So if I go to try to call aid, it says slaves cannot use their permits, which makes sense. But not exactly. See, if I just put him into a caravan, look at that. All of her abilities are now able to be used. So let's just call a free 500 silver, a free food drop, and if we really needed to, we could call a free shuttle transport to anywhere within 70 tiles. That's a little okay. And when we're done, we could just walk back into the colony and we're good. Now you might think, wow, that's pretty broken. But guess what? It gets so much worse because we're about to take this exploit straight to the Stellark themselves. Okay, so we got a rogue space battle. Hopefully this doesn't hurt any of our colonists. Now we didn't get lucky enough to actually rescue someone who's not actually all that bad. Travis has recovered, decided to leave. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna have a surgeon who's high on smoke leaf, uh, you know, remove a organ or two. And one more, or not. And again, we have access to that oh so good ability called Neuroquake. Uh, not having to do anything and let people fight themselves is so much better. And there's the quest I was looking for, Royal Ascension. What this quest is, is the Stellark going to visit us. Unfortunately, in order to accept the quest, we need to have someone whose account. Now the quest actually specifies that you need to have a colonist whose account, but no you don't. For whatever reason, we can actually just accept the quest right now, despite the fact that we don't have a colonist whose account and we only have Andronos. I'm not exactly sure how the Empire is figuring this one out, but hey, who am I to complain? The other requirement of the quest is to have another royal bedroom, which we have. Now that we've gotten everything mostly prepared, we can go ahead and accept. And now we're well on our way to winning the game. Also, what the heck are these guys wearing? They look sick. Not even one year into the game, and we have the two most powerful sidecasters in the entire world. And both of them have access to Neuroquake. So we just got a siege, and uh, let's see how this old Neuroquake turns out. Actually, something that I just remembered you can do in sieges, and this is a bit of a bug as well, is effectively ensure that they just can't happen. And all of it is using the power of these sleeping spots. As you can see, these guys are gonna try to construct all this stuff, but as long as I just keep putting sleeping spots down, they can't actually build anything. So no mortars for them, which actually forces the siege to come attack us. Did I say us? Oh no, I meant my ridiculously powerful cataphracts that will immediately kill all of them. It also helps that two of them are wielding Persona Plasma Swords. 
another thing that makes keeping the Stellark so easy now is the fact that we can just keep having parties and his mood will be maxed through his entire visit. So much so that we could just sweep the whole we butchered human like under the rug. And now we've got another raid for a bunch of tribes people. With the power of our Persona Plasma Swords and some pretty advanced weaponry, I think we're gonna be okay. I stopped paying attention for a second and I just realized consumed cocktail 104 hours. Massive tolerance. I think he just drank every cocktail in the colony. The best part is he's still functioning though. Royal Tribute Collector. Guys, I think you're in the wrong spot. You're asking the current Stellark of the Empire to donate to your cause. That's like Mormons showing up to the Vatican and asking for donations. Wait, what the hell? Black Hive Attack and a raid from these guys? Hold on a minute. I'm not actually all that worried because the Black Hive should be able to kill everyone who's trying to attack us. It looks like the Tribals actually beat the Black Hive, which is a bit surprising, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think they're going to beat our max level soldiers. And with this shuttle arriving, that means GG. By telling everybody to get inside, we can now lift and win the game. Although funny enough, the only character that isn't allowed in is actually Andronos. Who would I try to right click? It says not allowed. Better luck next time Andronos. I'll see you on the next Rim World. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. Also, I'm probably streaming on my Twitch right now, so check it out if you want to see more. Thanks for watching. See ya.